So the, the objectives of this talk is to present the draft output standards being developed by the FE Standards Working Group. I want to stress that this is a proposal to the community and the goal of this talk is to get feedback and build towards consensus and adoption of these standards uh, by the ecological forecasting community. Uh, to that, to the, that end, um, in this talk, I'll want to begin with a discussion of why we're developing standards uh, and then describe the file output standards and the file metadata standards that we've proposed and then end by relating this to the protocols uh, that we're developing in the RCN forecasting challenge. Uh, so the immediate aim here in developing standards is to facilitate forecasting intercomparison uh, within the RCN forecasting challenge. But beyond this immediate short-term aim is the larger aim of supporting interoperability much more broadly. Um, and this is really a basic prerequisite to being able to develop uh, shared community cyber infrastructure upstream and also develop shared tools downstream that will help the community as a whole to improve the dissemination of ecological forecasts uh, and make it easier for end users of forecasts uh, and easier for us to develop things like shared visualization and decision support tools. Uh, standards will also uh, facilitate the comparative analyses across different forecasts uh, and will also support uh, independent validations. So there's a lot of great reasons uh, to focus on the development of forecast standards. Looking first at the forecast output files themselves, our design was informed by a few key principles. First, that uncertainties were critical to capture in ecological forecasts. And furthermore, uh, that we really wanted to try to capture the covariances uh, across time, across space, and across variables. Um, we also would note that we to acknowledge that ensemble methods are very common and popular in ecological forecasting. Um, and at the same time, that the outputs of many ecological forecasts can be very high dimensional. Uh, for example, there may be a, a time when the forecast was issued, as well as the time within that forecast that predictions were made for, as well as potentially up to three spatial dimensions, as well as the ensemble dimension. And this exists for every different output variable that comes out of a forecast. To address this, we've proposed a three-tiered system, uh, with NetCDF being the preferred file format providing two CSV alternatives that might be used for simple forecasts or when users are not comfortable with NetCDF. Uh, to illustrate this standard, we'll use a simple example of a stochastic uh, Lodka Volterra model with two species. And this forecast only involves uh, additive process error, but the parameters are fixed, the initial conditions are fixed, and we're only going to use 10 ensemble members uh, run at three different depths. So, for those not familiar with NetCDF, um, it is a machine independent binary format. It is self-documenting. And uh, specifically, we're gonna propose adopting the climate and forecast convention for variable names and the organization of NetCDF files. Uh, NetCDF files also have this advantage of being able to uh, store multiple variables of different dimensions. Uh, so you might have some variables that are lists, some that are tables, some that are uh, multiple dimensional arrays, some that are vectors, um, and these uh, are defined based on their dimensions and also allows us to store different global attributes. Looking at how we might apply this to our Lotopo Volterra example, uh, here our outputs have three different dimensions, uh, time, depth, and ensemble. Uh, within the variables, we would first define uh, each of those dimensions in terms of their units and their names and, and the actual values associated with them. Uh, we've proposed that uh, units within um, our forecasting standard be uh, UD unit parsable, so they're machine parsable. Um, next, looking at the output variables themselves, our species have dimensions, again, of time, depth, and ensemble. It can have, include a long name, such as a scientific name for these species. And then we've also asked uh, that users add this additional uh, data simulation flag to indicate when state variables are being constrained by data. And so if at a particular point in time, if there was data being assimilated that's updating the states or the parameters, we would flag that as separate from 
periods which are true forecasts where there wasn't data. And finally, we're asking users to provide a few additional pieces of metadata, uh, including the, the forecast issue time, so when was the forecast made, uh, a unique identifier for that specific forecast, uh, and then a unique identifier for the project itself that would stay the same over multiple you know, iterative rounds of forecasts, provided that the model itself has not changed or the workflow supporting it has not changed. If you were to say update the model version, you want to update that uh, project ID. Uh, the same considerations extend to our ensemble CSV format alternative, uh, but in this case, because the format, format, because the forecast cannot be natively stored as a data cube in a two-dimensional uh, CSV file, instead we're proposing the format uh, where the dimensions, in this case uh, time, death, and ensemble member, are in a long format. Uh, but the variables being forecast are uh, stored as columns. So here we have our species, our two species being stored and this additional data simulation flag. Um, this format may seem a bit simpler, uh, but is much more reliant on external metadata. Uh, so a lot of the same information that we were asking for in the NetCDF files still have to be provided. They just need to be provided in external metadata. Uh, and we also believe that this file format would be harder to work with for larger forecasts where you're looking at many times and many spaces and many state variables. Finally, um, the summary CSV format applies to cases where summary statistics are stored rather than full ensembles. In this case, different summary statistics such as mean and constant intervals are stored in long format. Uh, while this is a more compact format, it does result in the loss of information about covariances and thus is our, our least preferred for option. Next, I want to present our proposal how to archive metadata about forecasts. Uh, this proposal is guided by two key considerations. First, input from our theory and synthesis working group about ensuring that proposed standards would be sufficient not just for individual forecasts, but for cross forecast syntheses. Uh, for this group, being able to understand forecast uncertainties and forecast complexity uh, were key considerations. At the same time, we wanted to create a standard that was actually usable by the community, so we wanted to keep demands to a minimum and build on what was familiar. With these constraints in hand, we proposed to use the ecological metadata language as our base, uh, but then set a subset of that EML as required, and then in addition, to add uh, additional forecast specific variables within the additional metadata field within EML. So within the core EML, uh, one of the main things that we want documented is within a data table, uh, the output variables themselves, and so which file format was used, uh, what your variable names were and what the units were, uh, and other associated descriptors. Uh, we'd want to ask for the geographic coverage and the temporal coverage of the forecast, as well as the taxonomic coverage for any forecast where taxonomy is relevant, and then also uh, citation and provenance information about who made the forecast. In terms of documenting forecast uncertainties, we focused on five key terms that are key to the uncertainty budget of any forecast. Uh, the initial conditions, uh, the drivers and covariates within a model, the model's parameters, uh, whether the model contains any sort of uh, random effects or other hierarchical structures to capture uh, variability and heterogeneity within systems, and then the process error, which is uh, essentially the, the remaining residual error uh, after accounting for observation error. For each of these five uncertainty terms, we're asking users to document a few key attributes. Uh, first, under the uncertainty tag, uh, does this model even have this concept at all? Uh, and if so, is that concept data-driven? And if it is data-driven, are you propagating that uncertainty forward into the forecast? And if you are, are you also performing any sort of iterative uh, assimilation where the, the model is learning uh, iteratively using some sort of data assimilation technique? In terms of model complexity, we focused on the dimensionality of these variables. So for example, if you have uh, parameters, how many parameters you have? So how many, you know, that would be the dimension of the parameter vector. Uh, if you propagate uncertainty, what approaches are you using? And similarly, if you're assimilating data, what is, uh, approaches are you using? So if we apply this uh, to our logical Volterra example, uh, we can see that this is a model that uh, contains uncertainties 
for the initial conditions of two state variables, the two species. It does not have any driver data. It contains six parameters. It does not have random effects. Uh, it includes process error that it propagates forward. So that's the stochastic part. Uh, but it does so uh, using an ensemble of size 10 and does not account for any sort of uh, process error covariance structure. So in terms of additional uh, forecasting variables within the metadata, we're also asking for the forecast time step, uh, the forecast horizon, so how far out in the future does each forecast done, and the forecast frequency, so how often is the forecast reissued. We're asking for a basic description of the model, and then optionally, we're asking for additional data tables that describe the file formats, uh, variable names and units of things like the initial conditions, the covariates or drivers, parameters, and random effects. And for initial conditions, we also want to ask, you know, can you map those inputs to the outputs as well? Is there an obvious mapping within this forecast? Finally, uh, when we consider the process of writing a uh, protocol to describe a forecasting challenge, many of the same considerations need to be taken as we've discussed here in our uh, output standards, such as uh, spatial and temporal dimensions, uh, the frequency of the forecast, the variable names and their units. Uh, some additional things that needed to be considered are things like, do you standardize uh, the driver and covariate data across forecasts? Uh, what data uh, is being used for the training of the model, for the simulation as it's running, and for the validation of the forecast as part of the competition? And, and do you put constraints on what the data can, can be used for uh, training and assimilation? Uh, do you put in constraints on how the models need to be initialized, uh, whether they're being driven purely by data or by scenarios? Do you put any constraints on what uncertainties need to be included in a, any particular forecast competition? And then finally, technical details about how, where to submit archives and what formats are using. Obviously, we would hope folks adopt uh, this proposed format. Uh, thanks for listening.